Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we're answering the question, how do nerve cells work? The brain contains more than 100 billion nerve cells or neurons and each one of them is connected to, on average, a thousand other nerve cells to form circuits that enable us to process information. There are also specialist nerve cells, like those found in the retina in the eye, that convert light into electrical activity, enabling us to see, and other nerves connected to muscles help us turn our thoughts into actions. But how do nerve cells do this, and what do they look like? In general, all nerve cells have a cell body, containing the nucleus that holds the cell's DNA recipe book. Around the edges of the cell body are thin, spiky-looking protrusions of the cell membrane called dendrites, which receive connections from other nerve cells. Also emerging from the cell body is a slender, thread-like projection called the axon. This is the wire along which nerve signals are sent, at the other end of which is a terminal, a bit like an electrical junction box, that links the nerve cell up to another neuron, a muscle or even a gland that it can control. Some axons are very, very long. Blue whales, for example, have axons sending signals along the entire 30 metre lengths of their bodies. So how do nerve cells send information along these axons, and how quickly does it move? The answer is in the form of electrical pulses called action potentials, which travel at speeds of up to 120 metres per second, or almost 300 miles an hour. To be able to generate these action potentials, neurons first set up a voltage across the cell membrane. This is known as the membrane potential, and it's achieved by the cell swapping positively charged sodium ions, which it pumps out of the cell, for positively charged potassium ions, which are pumped in. Because the cell pumps out more sodium than it pumps in potassium, the inside of the cell becomes negatively charged compared to the outside, and this is the membrane potential. It's about 0.1 volts. The first thing that happens when an action potential is produced to send a signal down the axon is that some positively charged ions enter the nerve cell, which is known as depolarization. Now let's imagine you're out in your garden barefoot and you step on a nail. When the nail pierces the skin of your foot, it activates pain-sensitive nerve endings called nociceptors, causing them to open special pores or ion channels in their cell membranes. These allow sodium ions to flow into the nerve, making that part of the cell temporarily a bit more positive. This positive current begins to flow along the inside of the nerve cell, just as an electric current flows in a wire. But just as wires have resistance, over long distances a signal can weaken. The same would happen in a nerve cell and the information would be lost. So instead the nerve tops up the signal all the way along the axon and this is the action potential. The entry of positively charged sodium into the axon activates other ion channels in the membrane that are said to be voltage sensitive. These turn on whenever the membrane depolarizes like this. And when these channels activate, a surge of sodium ions enters the cell, making the inside of that part of the nerve become strongly positive. But this change in voltage also shuts off the sodium-carrying ion channels, stemming any further flow of sodium into the cell. Meanwhile, a separate set of voltage-sensitive ion channels become active. Rather than carrying sodium, these allow potassium to flow out of the cell, making the inside more negative again and resetting the membrane potential to where it started. But while all this is going on, the adjacent part of the nerve cell membrane has sensed the surge of positively charged sodium and activated its voltage-sensitive sodium channels, triggering the process to begin all over again further down the axon. In this way, the action potential is conveyed faithfully all the way along the nerve. Some nerve cells also have fatty cells wrapped around their axons that form what is known as a myelin sheath. This has a strong insulating effect on the axon, reducing the resistance so that the electrical signal can travel further before it needs topping up again. This occurs at the gaps between the cells of the myelin sheath, called nodes of Ronvier, which are packed with the ion channels that allow the sodium and potassium ions to move into and out of the nerve cell. The result is that information can travel much faster and more efficiently in nerves that have been myelinated like this. So let's go back to your unfortunate foot that stepped on the nail. 
action potentials will be firing off along the affected nerves, which run up to the spinal cord. Here they pass on the pain signal to other groups of nerve cells, which process it and coordinate appropriate responses, like quickly taking your foot off the nail. Nerve cells communicate in this way at junctions known as synapses. Where a nerve meets a muscle, this is called a neuromuscular junction, but it's pretty similar. The axon of, let's call it the first nerve cell, forms a small bulge called a nerve terminal. Inside are thousands of tiny sacs or vesicles. Each of these contains about 5,000 molecules of a chemical called a neurotransmitter. When an action potential arrives at the nerve terminal, it triggers some of these stored vesicles to fuse with the cell membrane, discharging their neurotransmitter contents. These molecules move across the gap, separating the first nerve cell from the second nerve cell or muscle, where they dock with structures called receptors. These open ion channels in the membrane of the second nerve cell, altering its activity and passing on the nerve message. Once the signal has been passed on, the neurotransmitter is then broken down, usually by enzymes, or taken back up into the nerve ending, where it can be reused. Synapses are important because they enable the brain to learn and adapt. By altering the numbers of synaptic connections between one nerve cell and another, for instance, the nervous system can strengthen or weaken a nerve circuit, so we can learn not to go out in the garden with no shoes on next time. That's it for this time. To get the answers to more science questions, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye.